Welcome back to the Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich. Joining me now is a new friend of the Pet Stop. Travis Gale is the owner of the Eyes of the Wild Center in Warren County and the Wallaby Tales Traveling Zoo. He teaches children of all ages about the magnificent animals that roam our planet. And he's here now to share a few of them with us. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having us back again. You're welcome. Yeah, it's good to be back. We don't have a, a, a stuffed critter here. We actually have a <laughs> paralyzed with fear <laughs> flying squirrel, huh? Well, sitting nice and still like that is better we, than we what like it could be. He could be climbing all over and trying to glide from me to you or across onto one of the cameras, and that wouldn't be great. Common in New Jersey, Travis? Very common, actually. The um, A lot of areas in New Jersey, there's actually more flying squirrels than there are gray squirrels. Wow. But these guys are pretty much exclusively nocturnal. I mean, you can see he's got great big eyes. Yeah. Those eyes see allow a lot of light in so that they can see at sure. nighttime very well. Yeah. And, um, you know, the gray squirrels are active in the daytime, and so we see them. But gray squirrels will go to your bird feeders. These guys do too. It's just a lot of times you don't see it. Happening. Well, I'll tell you, they were they happened to be very common in my attic in Mendham in the 1990s. <laughs> my first encounter is with these guys, too. The same thing. If we had them, we'd get in, in yeah. our house. And my aunt has a big A-frame house. Okay. And she had them infested oh. in, in her peak. And uh, you could actually go stand on her steps and watch them. They'd jump and glide right over your head if you stood in the right spot because um, they would always glide out to the same yeah. tree. Well, we would hear so. a soft pump on, on the rooftop around mm -hmm. 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning as they're gliding you know, back. back home. Yeah, and they, they have the gliding membrane on the side of their body called yeah. the patagium, and then right. they have this big flattened tail. So as they're gliding, they'll rotate their tail from side to side to steer through the trees. How cool and, is that? And then as they're gliding head first towards a tree, uh -huh. right before they smash into the tree, they'll swing the tail between their legs and arch their wow. back, and it kind of puts on the air brake. And they could glide as far as a football field. Yeah, at least Amazing. as far as a football Unbelievable. field. Unbelievable. All right, actually, we have a fox next. Yep, definitely. Okay. Let me get this guy <laughs> A pretty back interesting in uh, fox from uh, North Africa. That's right. This uh, is... With big ears, huh? Very big ears. It's a fennec fox, and they've found mainly in and around the Sahara Desert. Wow, what a, oh, what a beautiful animal. Yeah. Wow. Very mm. pretty. Um, so, yeah, giant ears. It's the mm -hmm. smallest type of fox that lives on our planet. They do have bigger ears than any other fox compared to the rest of their body. Um, obviously, the ears are for hearing predators. They also hunt using their hearing. This is a nocturnal animal as well. Right. And so in the desert at night, hunting for small insects and mice, they need great hearing to find them in the dark. Mm -hmm. Her ears also help her to stay cool. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like ear conditioners. She has veins and arteries right at the surface of her ear, and when the blood pumps up into her ears, the heat carried in her blood can escape. Interesting. Yes. Similar to an African elephant, you know, to dissipate mm -hmm. heat. Exactly. They don't flap their ears like those guys do, <laughs> but, but she also, on the bottom of her feet, she has mm -hmm. fur where oh, yeah. normally canines have pads or skin, right. and so that fur protects her feet from getting burned. Very it's kind of like built-in Crocs or yeah. Tevas or flip-flops. Slippers. <laughs> yeah, protect the pads, because in the Sahara, I mean, it can be 120 degrees, so wow. that sand, even when she comes out at nighttime, is still hot. She's beautiful. Yeah, it's very pretty. They, they're they pretty difficult to take care of, though. They have a pretty varied diet that we have to give okay. them to make sure they get the right vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. We have a male at our wildlife set, center named Yoda, uh -huh. and Yoda has a bent tail because the people who had him before us only fed him hot dogs and dog food. Ooh. And one day, just wagging the tail, it broke. His bones became so fragile and weak. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have to feed him crickets and mealworms, mice, hard-boiled eggs, cat food, dog food, fruits, vegetables, monkey biscuits. Wow. You can't just go to Petco and buy fennec fox uh, food. So high-maintenance pet. The definitely, yeah. It requires a permit in New Jersey, you were saying? These are very high, highly regulated. Right. They're considered potentially dangerous. They have very sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. um, really shouldn't be a pet. I mean, she's the, the friendliest one I've seen, see but that. when we're at our center and we let her run around, she she'll come close to you, mm -hmm. and but as soon as you reach out, she'll turn and go. So they're never going to be like a dog. All right. You know. And now we have a non-nocturnal, uh, a diurnal uh, pet here, or a uh, resident of South America, uh, a cavi. Mm -hmm. The Patagonian cavi. Or, or a mara. Or a mara, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one sometimes is tricky to get her out. Or him out, actually. This uh, related is... to the uh, groundhog, huh? Well, they're, yeah, they're, pig, their closest relative is the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. This is sort of like a giant wild guinea pig. Yeah, and, sounds um, like a kangaroo. Yeah, actually, it's funny. A lot of a lot of people describe these as like a cross between a kangaroo, a rabbit, and a deer. Mm -hmm. And so when I bring them out to show kids, they're 
a lot of times have no idea <laughs> what it is. Not many people have heard of a Patagonian cavey. Yeah. And a couple of things everybody notices about him is his legs. They look very thin and fragile, but they can actually kick really hard. If something really? is pursuing them, they can kick backwards. They're very good diggers. Mm -hmm. They spend a lot of time underground when something comes up to them. Those large eyes help them see in the burrow. And one of the other neat things we often teach the kids is with mammals, a lot of times you can tell what an animal eats just by where its eyes are. If you think about the herbivores and plant eaters, most of the time their eyes are on the side of their right. head. Right. Predators have eyes facing forwards. Mm -hmm. This having eyes on the side of its head is if, if I stand in the middle of a group of children and have them raise their hand if they can see part of his eye, the kids sitting in front, alongside, and even behind him can see part of his eye. If, he can see, if you can see part of his eye, he can see you. Right. So he can see things almost all the way around him so he knows when the guy with the sharp teeth is coming yeah. after him. When to run, huh? That's right. So. And very, very friendly. I understand they rarely bite, huh? Yeah, I've never been bitten by a cavey, mm. knock on wood. Mm -hmm. um, they're very docile, and they can, if, you, if they're really young, they, they're social animals, so they will kind of socialize with humans. But um, that doesn't make them good pets either. Right. He, he definitely can kick really hard, and usually I hold him real close to me mm -hmm. so he can't wind up and get me from a good distance away. Wow. And one of the other things they do to defend themselves is if you, if you look at my shirt, it's slowly getting covered with hair. Mm -hmm. a, a wild cavey, when something goes to bite it, a bunch of hair will come off into its mouth. Interesting. And so I describe that as if you went to McDonald's and got a cheeseburger and it drops a pound of hair in your mouth, you're not going to keep eating it. You're yeah, now that you mentioned, you didn't have a hairy chest the last time you were. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Travis. <laughs> thanks. Cool Thank critters. You, yeah. I appreciate all you coming. All right. Thanks for having us back. You're welcome. Folks, now it's time for our pet of the week. And these photographs come to us from Cheryl in East Brunswick. This is her nine-year-old...